Hey, Elise. Elisa, how are you? Miss Gabriel. We're going to get started in a second. I was just thinking about something. I'm vibing on Michael Jackson right now. Miss Mike. McGrath. Okay. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the heart. Well, guys, if you've noticed in... Uh, Thank you for the hearts. If you notice, I put in the, um, thank you for all you guys that's joined. I'm going to get into this because I'm not going to stay too long. I got to go pick up the wife today. Just got off from work today. Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, I'm hot. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to say about being used and you got to realize, and the reason why I said you have to, you can't get upset at the attempt, but don't allow yourself to be used, is that we live in a predatory we live in a predatory world. And when while living in a predatory world, you have to understand that people are gonna attempt, again the keyword attempt, to prey on you, to use you. Whether it's work, whether you're an entrepreneur, and so I work and I'm an entrepreneur. And so people are going to make attempts to take advantage of you or whether it's dating, whatever it is, whether it's in your family, whatever it is, people are going to make attempts to use you because often people will think about, people will think about what works for them. They will think about their agenda. They're, they're thinking about their focal point. So here's the key. And it's simple. But it's not as simple as some people, they won't let it in. No one can use you unless you allow it. Let's let's make that understood. Hello from Clinton, New Jersey. Okay, North Jersey in the house. Gina in LA. Okay, hello. Um, just because, and then you don't get upset that someone tries to use you. That's where they're coming from. Do not allow your emotions to be dictated by the actions of somebody else. Truth cuts through all that. Direct questioning cuts through all that. You ask somebody directly, why? What is this in need of? Whatever. Direct question is one easy way to cut through someone trying to use you. And understand that. And do not allow someone to take such position in your life, in your head, at your job, whatever, that they're just having you do whatever and you don't seem to respond, ask any questions or whatever. And hello, everyone that's joined. I appreciate all of you. Because it's funny that, you know, and I've said before, I'm an educator. I've been teaching 20 years for New York City Department of Education, 17, going on 18. And it's ironic how many people will attempt to get me to do things because they assume. <laughs> they assume I either don't know or don't care or whatever. And I always say, excuse me. Why did you ask me that? Or why is it that you want me to do that? And it's funny how if you wait on the responses, you'll see that a person is now caught at what they're attempting. And I don't get mad at you trying to use me. I find it comical because I appreciate it. Actually, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I appreciate when somebody attempts to use me. I'm gonna tell you why. It helps me keep my game sharp. It helps me keep my focus make sure that I'm attentive and make sure that I'm paying attention to the details. It's why I read everything that's put in front of me. Oh, no, no, just sign it. Stop talking. I am going to read this. And if you're not going to allow me to read this, then I am not going to sign it. You have to take control. And I'm going to tell you, when I listen to people, when they explain why they were used or they're upset about being used, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Well, I let him. I let her. I trusted him. I trusted her. I believed him. I believed her. And then I always ask, did you investigate? Did you ask any questions? Did you do your due diligence? Well, I thought, no, you assumed. And then your thoughts were based on the assumption. No. Direct questioning. Take a step back. How is this benefiting me? Now, if you're giving, lending someone your talents, that's different. 
I lend my talents all the time. Somebody might need some help. No problem. I got you. Somebody might need something. No problem. I'll do for you. I'm not being used then because it's something that I agree to, something I don't mind doing. But I'm not going to allow you. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. I am not going to allow you to take advantage of me. And I have some say so on it. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't be lied to. That don't mean that behind the scenes, someone may take advantage of you and you have nothing to do with it. There's nothing you can do about that until it surfaces, until it comes to light. So when it does come to light, you deal with it directly. I find it so funny how when people are taken advantage of and used, they do not want to go and confront the person to clear things up. Oh, just just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. If nothing else, you, you're, an answer is required. Now, if there's nothing that can be gained from the confrontation, well, then you let it go. But you need to find out if nothing else so you don't get in that predicament again. You know, it's it's sad that it has to be that way. But as I said before, we live in a predatory world. Whether it's business, relationships, whatever. And we really need to pay attention to that. I, I just find it fascinating how some people fold up because they allowed themselves to be taken advantage of. I don't have a problem with loving anyone. I don't know the language, so it'd have to be in English if you want me to respond to it. I apologize. I hope that means something positive. And if it doesn't, I'll take it as something positive. Um, we have to... We have to understand there's nothing wrong. Hello from Brazil. Again, I don't under, I guess is that Spanish? I don't know. I can't understand the language. I apologize. Um, we have to make sure that we're checking ourselves and understanding what's going on and then making sure that our focus is on what we're doing don't don't allow somebody to have that type of place in your life at your job in your relationship where you don't have a clue what's going on and they're gaining whatever they want from you taking what they want from you with no resistance come on now come on and when you do those, and when those attempts are made, tighten your game up. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you. I appreciate it for calling me cool. Tighten your game up. When you see an attempt at that, okay, that's what that's the front that you came at. No problem. That's what you attempted to do. No problem. You thought I was weak in that area. No problem. Don't get cocky though. Don't get cocky, but just stay focused. And understand that everything is, is is put here for you to learn from, to grow from. And, and just don't allow it. And yes, I've heard some people say, but you can't stop what other people do. No, you cannot. Just like they cannot stop what you are doing for you. Can No one can tell you about you better than you. So if you got you on lock and everything is straight and you have you in control, what can somebody do to you? I'm considered arrogant in a lot of circles. And I said considered because that's how some people see me. Want to know how I feel about it? I don't. I don't care. Because if that's your perception of me, okay, whatever. I know who I am. I know what I do. But if you think I'm going to live my life based on what other people think about me, a, a fellow educator said to me today, you don't seem to really care what anybody thinks. I said, you have it wrong. You're stating it wrong. I care what people have to say when it's in reference to what I'm doing or in reference to the school or to the children. But their opinions of me? No, not at all. She said, it doesn't bother you that some people may not like you. I said, okay, some people don't like themselves. I'm supposed to worry about that? And she said, oh, I would be definitely emotional if I knew people didn't like me. And I said, that's a sad existence. And she got offended. You're offended by me responding to what you said about yourself. So was I supposed to stay quiet? That you would get emotional over a bunch of people who actually don't know you? And let's keep it real. I don't care how well you think you know people at work. <laughs> As I was taught a long time ago, work is work. And I don't care how much you love certain people at work. How many of them do you call and see if their bills are paid once they leave the job? Now, if y'all became friends and stayed together after all that, fine. But for the most of us, when people leave, we wish them goodbye. We have a goodbye party. 
And if we run into them, we run into them. Work is work. I'm not worried about who loves me at work. I am cordial to everyone, friendly to everyone. Friends with, well, then that number diminishes tremendously. And the reason why that number diminishes tremendously is because I'm not at work to make friends. I am at work to get the job done. And in getting the job done, it is about being cordial, being friendly. That's why I, I'm not used at work. It was funny because the teacher that attempted to use me, when I asked her, well, why would you bring this to me? She said, well, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean? What do I mean? My question was clear. Aren't you an educator? Why are you bringing this to me? And why are you asking me to do this? I'd like clarity. And she said, well, I thought it was something that you would enjoy to do because, you know, you're good at this work. I said, no, I'd rather not do that. And that's not for me to do. I have a, a lot of other things on my plate to do. I'm sorry. Then the conversation shifted. Then it was, well, Miss So-and-so wants you to do this. I said, really? OK, well, let Miss So-and-so put that in writing and then I'll consider it. But until then, you can take that with you. And I said, let me ask you a question. When did Miss So-and-so tell you this again? What's up? Is that? Sh Hello, I, don't, I can't say your name. Is that Snarks? Garnix? But I said, when did Miss So-and-so give you this directive for me to do this? She said the other day. I said, no, I need the date and time. I need to write that down. And I noticed that she was now shrinking back. And I noticed that her demeanor changed. Because in her attempt to use me to get some work done, my direct questions, and the key thing, direct questions start to uncover a lot of foolishness. Then she got an attitude, and here comes the anger. And I always love that part, because when I got him angry, then I know I got him. All right, I'll just take care of it myself. Okay, we could have saved all that time. You could have just did it. Big blackers, okay, whatever that means. Sounds good. I'm big and black, that'll work. Big blackers, okay. <laughs> You found some interesting things. But anyway, thank you for the hearts. Also, thank you for the comments. That's that's a funny one. Big blackers. <laughs> anyway, but again, direct questions. And the reason direct questions, like I said, it helps. And so, guys, I hope that this has been helpful. Because I can see we're, we're, we're reaching the, the, the funny time in the, in the comments. <laughs> Where you get all type of weird stuff. I thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. And so listen, guys, you know, my name is K.L. Belvin. I'm an author, educator, poet, father, husband, publisher, mentor, speaker. I wear a lot of hats. And so I am trying to get back to scoping on a regular like I was. I had fell off a little while and I had some very influential friends demand that I get back on and exercise my voice. And as an author and as a publisher, I need to do it anyway. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I just want to say this, too, in reference to um, some things that I'm working on. My brand new book, um, Lukewarm Saint, which is inspirational fiction, is finally done. Its release date will be Black Friday, November 27th. It is my third book. I am excited. I stepped out of my comfort zone and decided to do fiction because um, normally I'm doing the self-help and inspirational stuff, but I decided to write some fiction. So 53,000 words later, my book will be ready. I am going to publish it myself, of course, because this is the reason why I created the company. But I'm excited. Um, my beta readers have actually gave me some fantastic responses. So where do I live? I live in New York City, Brooklyn, New York. You coming? You visiting? If you're coming, let me know. Hook up. Got to purchase a book first. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. And um, like I said, this is my first step out of uh, stepping out of my comfort zone, but it's what it is. I'm expanding my horizons and doing the things I need to do. I have some other projects that's coming up. <clears throat> this year, I really took off and just took it easy. Um, grad school starts in January. February, I'll be in Napa Valley. I'll be speaking. I'm at a conference and retreat. I'm speaking in Napa Valley in February. And then in March, I'll be at an event in New Jersey. Literary ladies have invited me over as one of the guest authors to sit down and discuss my work and what's been going on with me. And besides grad school this coming year, so 2016 is going to be a bigger year. Thank you for the hearts. 
I really took this. Um, thank you so much. Yes, I know it's Josephine, and I saw you at the tailgate, but you're a Giants fan, so I couldn't give you no love this past weekend because you know I'm a Cowboys fan. So it looked like y'all were having a great time out at the stadium. So you know, always a great party. But I definitely appreciate you, my girl Joe. You got to check out her scope. She does her thing. But um, yeah, I just want to say I would appreciate the support, and I appreciate I, I appreciate. It. I'm speaking like some of my students. I appreciate. Um, wow, now we're just going to be real disrespectful. Let me tell you, I'm not going to block you. I find you humorous. Thank you for wasting your time watching me and saying very disrespectful things. Wait a minute, that's not a disrespect. Big black. <laughs> so we have somebody that's believing the myth on the scope today. My man, either your girl was taken by one or you'd like to be with one. Works for me. <laughs> anyway. The idea is, I just want to say thank you for all the support and love. And um, sometimes when I felt like walking away, um, I've had a lot of people who's actually, um, nah, no, 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 no. He's not an idiot. He's He or she is doing them. And actually, that's a beautiful thing because it helps me. Like I said, that's, that's a learning experience because if I fed into that and got sidetracked, no. Listen, let him rock. Let him rock. He's here. So he's enjoying this somehow. Something that I'm saying is keeping him or her here. So, hey, not a problem. And it's really not offensive. He said, big black. <laughs> Might be reading my book from Jigolo to Jesus and talk to some of my ex-girlfriends. I don't know. Anyway, the idea is I just want to say thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. I've really been um, refocused and I've got myself back to where I really need to. I'm on my grind. And so, as I said, in June. The wife and I are leaving, moving to Delaware, restarting everything, and I'm back to writing on a regular. Oh, I love you, black man. There you go. See? See? They go to love. So you got to hang in there. See? There you go. Thank you for supporting the brothers. <laughs> no reason to block them. But anyway, yes. So I'm on my grind, and I'm back to writing, and this is book one. Actually, it's book one of a three-part series. But we're going to see how this book does, and we're going to promote this book heavily. We're going to get this book out. And one of the key parts of this book, no profanity. I decided that I am going to focus this book on the faith-based direction that I am going in with my life. And so I wrote this book with no profanity. I caught flack from fellow authors. And that's actually another scope that I'm going to do soon. How some folks said, how are you going to write realistic fiction with no curse words? And I said, I don't use them. So how can it be unrealistic? But now, do I or have I cursed? Yes. Does one slip out every now and then? Yes. But I make a conscious effort not to use profanity. So this is what I did with my work. And yes, it can be done. And so because of the faith direction that I am moving in, I want my work to not only reflect that, to be a clear mirror of who I am and what I am as a literary person. So... You will see that lukewarm saint is the title. It's on my the, the you can actually pre-order it now. It's on my website, www.bravenbravinpublishing.com, and the book will be released on uh, November 27th, Black Friday. And I'm excited. I am really excited. Um, it should have been done a year ago, but I honestly let fear get in the way, and that's not something that I normally do. But my fear was not the usual fear, but it was, I was fearful that my book would get lumped in with a lot of other African-American interests, which I'm still trying to figure out what that means. We don't have the same interests of the rest of the world, so I'm not sure when I go into a bookstore what that means. Thank you for the hearts. Is that they'll have like an African-American interest section and they jam every book that's like written by a black person onto one shelf. <laughs> As if we don't write in the various genres. So I was a little fearful that, you know, that was going to happen to my book. But then I said, you know what? I still have to finish it. I still have to complete it. I still have to get it out to the world. And I'll let the world decide what they're going to do with it, if they're going to enjoy it, if I even have a future in this particular genre of fiction. And so I said, I'm going to let it rock. And we're going to see what happens. So we're going to see if the love is going to be there. Um, but like I said, that's another scope. Let me get ready to get out of here. I got to go pick up the wife. Uh, my name is K.L. Belvin, big blacker to some people, <laughs> and um, I am glad you took the time out to, 
to stop by and hang out with me for a little while today. I am on all social media uh, formats, Facebook, KL Belvin, Google Plus, KL Belvin, Twitter, KL Belvin, also on Twitter, Braven Books, and I think I'm still on a couple others. I can't remember. I'm on most of them. Just look up KL Belvin. My website is www.braven, B-R-A-V-I-N, bravenpublishing.com. My email, if you want to send me a direct email to get in touch with me, mainoffice at bravenpublishing.com. That's mainoffice at bravenpublishing.com. I am available to speak at different events. Would love to come and hang out with old and young. I cater my, um, by KL. Oh, definitely. I'll, I'll tell out to the fam. See you, Joe. Be good. Number one black man. There we go. Number one black man. Yes. But, um, I speak to young and old. Um, I am an educator, um, almost 20 years education. I've uh, been in the publishing game for eight years now. I have three books, as I said, five anthologies, as well as uh, my wife and I have published over 17. Bravenpublishing.com. Thank you so much, Joe. Oh, always the love, darling. And you're looking lovely, too. I got to tell you that. You're lucky. You know, you know who me and you talk. You're lucky. Tiff ever get kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> But anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Um, I'll definitely be scoping soon. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. You too, Skarnix, or whatever your name is. I appreciate it. Big Black, Big Blacker, signing out. <laughs> God bless, guys. Big Blacker. I like that. <laughs>